Hi, this is Dan Heisman, and we're continuing with our series of videos to help you improve your chess. This is a video that's long overdue, and it was a very popular novice nook and video when I was doing videos on the, for the ICC. It's an important issue for especially everybody rated under 1500. Um, when I have students and I say to them, after your opponent's last move, your piece is not safe, what should you do? About 80% of them immediately answer, well, defend it. Okay, well, very often that's a good idea, and sometimes that's even the only way to make a piece safe. But a lot of times, defending is not the right answer. So I want to talk about the five ways that you can make a piece safe. And we're assuming that the piece is not safe. What does that mean, a piece is not safe? A piece is not safe, meaning that if you passed and you said, I'm not going to make a move at all, go ahead, opponent, make a move, they can do some forcing maneuver that would win that piece. So you have to make your pieces safe. Of course, the science of winning pieces we call tactics. And defensive tactics is kind of the science of not losing your pieces, which is also important. So making your pieces safe is the issue. And we're gonna talk about all the five ways to make a piece safe. If you haven't seen my earlier video called the safety table, these two videos kind of go together, the safety table and the five ways to make a piece safe. All right, let's use some openings to show examples of making things safe. So let's say someone plays D4, D5, Knight f3, e6, bishop g5. All right, so if I say to you, what black piece is not safe now? The answer, of course, is black's queen is not safe. All right, so the question is, how, what are all the ways that black might save the queen? Okay, let's talk about some of them in this position. Now, not every way to make a piece safe occurs in every position. So, for instance, in this position, we could say, let's say we can guard it. Well, it's already guarded. The king is guarding the queen. Does that work? No, and if you haven't seen my earlier video called AWL, that's the situation here. AWL means attack with something worth less. When you attack something with something worth less, and bishops are worth less than queens, then you can't guard it. So even though the queen's already guarded, guarding in, and defending, which are the same thing, are, is not an option. So here, the queen is guarded, but that means nothing. If black doesn't do anything, then white will take the queen and trade a bishop for the queen and win material. So guarding in this case is already being done, but it's not going to make the queen safe. What, what else could black do? Well, black could move the queen. Where could he move it? Well, black could move the queen to d7. Now it's safe. Black could move the queen to d6. Very often, when you have a piece that's not safe, and it can move, very often moving the piece to another square where maybe it's even a better square for that piece is very often the best way to make something safe. All right, what else could black do to make the queen safe besides moving it? He tried to guard it, that obviously doesn't work here. Well, another thing is that you could block. Now, blocking has pros and cons. For instance, let's try blocking all kinds of different ways here. Let's say we block with the bishop. Okay, well, that's a pretty good block. The bishop is offering the trade for the bishop. Bishops are worth the same, obviously. So if white wants to trade bishops, it would be a fair trade. But also notice, by blocking with the bishop, we're now attacking the bishop on g5. So this block has a very good possibility, which is we're not only saving the queen, but we're threatening the white bishop as well. So that makes bishop e7 a very possible move. How else could black block? Black could block with a knight. If he blocks with the knight on f6, the knight is now pinned, but it's not a big deal. The queen's guarding the knight, the pawn's guarding the knight. Black can easily get out of this pin later by moving the queen or playing bishop e7. The bishop on g5, of course, is not threatened, but knight f6 is a perfectly good way to save the queen. We could also block with the pawn. This is an AWL. Now we're attacking the bishop with something worth less which means the bishop has to move. That makes f6 a real possibility. Now, a lot of my students would say, oh, no, I can't do that. My king is opened up, and I'm going to be in big trouble, and I'm blocking my best square for my knight. 
Well, all those things are a little bit true, but also the fact that you have an AWL move and the bishop has to move is a is a big factor. So f6 is not as bad as a lot of intermediate players would make it out to be. And it certainly saves the queen. All right, so, so far we've looked at move the piece, block the piece, and guard the piece. How about taking the piece? Well, that means queen takes g5 is a candidate move. One way to make a piece safe, in fact, one of the very best ways to make a piece safe, is simply take off the attacking piece if you can do it safely. But can queen takes g5 be safe for black? And of course, the answer here is no. If white didn't have a knight on f3, that would be the best move. For instance, let's change the position a little. Let's say white had played knight c3, e6, bishop g5. Now, clearly, that fourth way of making the, the piece safe, making the queen safe, which is to take the bishop, becomes the best way to save the piece. So that's the fourth way. The fifth way is counterattack. Counterattack means do something else that's equal or greater of value of the threat so that white can't execute his threat of bishop takes d8. In this case, black has only one counterattack, and that's bishop to b4 check. And now bishop takes d8 is impossible. White has to get out of check, and therefore bishop b4 check saves the queen. Now, is that a good move? Well, as you can see, the answer is not really. White can play his own AWL move and hit the bishop, and now black's queen is attacked and his bishop is attacked, but luckily for him, he has only one way to save the both pieces. He can play bishop e7 now, but that pretty much gives white a free move c3. So playing bishop b4 check and then back to e7 is not as good as just playing bishop e7 right away. But that's the fifth way to make it safe. So let's now that we've looked at every one, let's enumerate those five possibilities. The five ways to make a piece safe are move it, move it to a safe square, that's one block the, the attack, which could cause a pin or it could cause some sort of counterattack. Okay, blocking it is number two. Number three is just move it to a safe square. Number four is capture the attacking piece. And number five is do some sort of counterattack where you have an equal or greater threat to what he threatened. So those are the five ways to make a piece safe. In any given position, one or more of those five might exist. All right, so your job is to find all the ways to make your piece safe and figure out which one's the best one. A lot of my students watch Grandmaster games and they think that counterattack is the number one way to make a piece safe. They think, oh, if somebody attacks my knight, I'll find a way to attack his knight. Well, that's actually almost the opposite. When you use counterattack, you're almost always creating complications. And complications are something you have to figure out very carefully and it's sort of like playing with fire. If you're a really good player, fire is, is, could be on your side and it could be a really good weapon. But if you're not a really good player and you're playing with fire, fire can burn you. Let's look at a really simple example of that. And we looked, I think we looked at this in the AWL video. Let's say white plays e4 and black plays e6 and white plays d4 and black plays d5 and white plays the not very good move bishop d3. Black should take the pawn and attack the bishop now. But let's say he plays knight f6 and white plays e5. This is an AWL, attack with something worth less. When you AWL, you either have to move the piece or you have to make some sort of clever counterattack. Well, usually 90% of the time moving the piece is going to be right, and this is no exception. Black should play knight to d7 with a perfectly good game. But suppose black says, I'll show you. You're attacking my knight. I'm going to prove to you I don't have to move it. I'm going to check you instead. All right, well, that might work out okay if white puts a piece in the way and then black gets to play like knight e4 in some lines. But what happens here if white does another AWL and attacks the bishop with the pawn, like in the last example, except in the last example, black had bishop e7 saving his queen. But now he has two pieces that are attacked by pawns. And no matter what move black plays, white's going to be able to take off a piece on the next move and win a piece for a pawn. So this was not a very good idea for making the knight safe to do this kind of counterattack. Now you might laugh at this and say, I would never do that. But yet I see students all the time who come to me for lessons. They may not make a counterattack that's this obviously bad, but they counterattack when it's completely unnecessary 
and very often they get themselves into trouble. Sure, there's some situations where counterattack is going to be the best idea, but, but consider counterattack more as a last resort. Now, a lot of times there's only one way to make a piece safe, and it doesn't matter which way of the five ways it is. Counterattack, move the piece, guard it, block it, uh, take off the attacking piece. If there's only one way to make the piece safe, then unless you want to sacrifice it, that's the way you're going to have to do it, and it doesn't matter which ones are better or worse. Let's look at some, some well-known attacks and counterattacks and some various openings and see what is the main way to make something safe. So, for instance, white plays e4, black plays d5. All right, white's e-pawn is not safe. What are all the ways we could save it? Well, we could play e5. We could just move it to a safe square. We could guard it any number of ways. We could play d3. We could play knight c3. We could play queen f3. We could play f3. You get the idea. There's lots of ways to guard it. We can't block the attack because the pawn is only one square diagonally away from our pawn, so blocking's not possible. We could play as Vishenzug. We could play the, the in-between move, the counterattack, bishop b5 check. And now he can't take our pawn, but that's a bad move again because he can AWL us, attack with something worth less with c6. And now the only way to save our bishop and the pawn is to play bishop d3. And you should see this as being very awkward, blocking the d-pawn with the bishop is not a great idea. So counterattack, not the best thing here. Um, the best way to make this pawn safe and the main book move is to simply capture the attacking piece. Take the pawn. Okay, and now if black wants to get equality in material, he can take back with the queen, which is the main line of the center counter, or he could play knight f6 and attack the pawn that way. Those are the two major lines and Eventually, black's going to win back that pawn. You could look it up in an opening book if you want to see what happens if white tries to play something dangerous like c4. Um, it's okay for black. So knight f6 is a way to win back the pawn, but that's, that's not the issue here. We're talking about ways to make a piece safe. Okay, um, let's try another way to, to make. Let's look at a scotch defense. d4, d5 knight f3, knight c6, d4. Okay, white is attacking the e-pawn twice. It's only guarded once, so it's not safe. Black has a variety of ways he could guard it, and a lot of times I see lower-rated players play d6 here, which transposes into a line in the philidor, but that's not black's best move. Black's best move to make this pawn safe is to take the pawn. And now white takes with the knight, and now everything on both sides is safe. When white takes with a knight, he's not threatening knight takes c6. It's guarded by two pawns. Let's go a little bit further. Let's say black plays knight f6. Now the e-pawn is not safe. Black's threatening to take it. For instance, if black takes the pawn and white plays queen e2 to pin the knight, then black could, for instance, just play knight takes d4 and at least win a pawn. Queen takes e4, check knight e6. If you don't believe me, let's play that. All right, so a3... Knight takes e4, if we pin him, queen e2, knight takes d4, queen takes check, and now black could save the knight a couple different ways. He could play queen e7, which pins the queen. This is an example of that counterattack. That's the way to make the knight safe, or the knight could just move back to e6 and he's safe, and black's up a pawn. You'll always see all these different ways about making things safe. So how should white make this pawn safe? Well, he can't push it. If he pushes it, black will just take it. So pushing it is not safe. He can guard it in a number of ways. He can't play bishop d3 because of knight takes d4. That's called removing your own guard. Here, white is making his e-pawn safe, but the, at the cost of making his knight on d4 not safe. So he can't do that. Knight c3 is a move here, but it's considered not always the best because black can play bishop b4, repinning the knight and making this pawn not safe again. And now if you say, Oh, I know how to make that pawn safe. I'll get out of the pin, and when I get out of the pin, the knight's guarding the pawn. Well, that's a common mistake also, because after bishop d2, black can remove the guard, and when white takes, he can play knight takes e4, and yes, we've got complications with queen to g4, but the point is, that's not always the best way to make it safe. So the main move here for white is to play 
knight takes c6, which is, again, this kind of counterattack by taking off a piece. I'm saving my e-pawn because black can't take my e-pawn now because white will take his queen and he'll, be, he'll have taken off a knight and a queen and all black will have gotten so far as a pawn. So knight takes c6 at least temporarily saves the e-pawn. And now when black takes back toward the middle, white plays e5, saving the pawn by pushing it up one and creating his own thread of an AWL. And now the main move for black is not to move the knight because if he moves the knight to d5, white can play c4 and start chasing the knight around the board. It's not terrible, but it's not his best move. The main move is queen to e7. This is that counterattack again, answering the AWL by pinning the pawn to the king so the pawn can't take the knight. And white answers by unpinning the pawn, therefore threatening the knight again. All right, well, now the knight is not safe again. So now black has to use the, one of those five ways to make the knight safe. He can no longer counterattack. He can't play queen to d4 check. Why not? If you don't know, you can stop the video, figure it out. The answer is if he plays queen b4 check, then white will play c3. And again, we have that two AWL situation. White's threatening to take off the queen with the pawn. He's threatening to take off the knight with the pawn. And no matter where the black queen goes to save himself, white can take off the knight. So queen b4 check, no good. So black should just move the knight, play knight d5. White should hit the knight. And now again, we have an, another AWL, another safety issue. What's the best way for, for black to save the knight? Turns out, this time it's a counterattack. Bishop a6, pinning that pawn. So we can't take the knight. So we can see this line in the scotch is very tricky and uses many, many of those different ways of making the piece safe that we just talked about. Let's talk about the main line of the Roy Lopez. If you haven't seen my video, it was the second one I did in my series, was the closed Roy Lopez. Let's, let's look about making pieces safe here. So e4, that pawn safe, e5, that pawn safe, knight f3 now attacking the e5 pawn, threatening to take it off. Obviously, black can't move the pawn. He can't capture the attacking piece. You can't interpose a knight attack. You can, never, you can only interpose attacks from bishops, queens, and rooks that are made from a distance. So blocking or interposing is not possible. So it turns out he has to either counterattack with knight f6, which is the Petrovs, or guard it with knight c6 or d6, knight c6 being the main line. White now plays bishop to b5. And for the reasons I explained in that earlier video, he's not threatening removal of the guard to win the pawn because black can double attack and win the pawn back. So the pawn is temporarily safe. And since bishop takes c6 does not win the pawn, black takes the opportunity to attack the bishop and say, hey, Mr. Bishop, if you want to take my knight, do it now while you're, you're not removing the guard. And white usually plays bishop to a4. Now black plays knight f6, attacking the pawn. How does white make it safe? Well, the main line is he castles. And the idea is later, if the knight takes the pawn, which is called the open variation, white's going to play d4. And if you use a computer or look this up in a book, white wins his pawn back by force. There's no way for black to remain up a pawn after d4. And this is the main move. This is the move the Grandmasters play. This is the move that the computers agree is the best move here. So castling does allow this pawn to be safe. The, the main move here for black is not the open variation, but the closed variation. He plays bishop to e7. White can still not take this pawn. If he plays bishop takes, pawn takes, knight takes e5. Black can just play knight takes e4. There's no skewer on the e-fob because the bishop has blocked that skewer. So what white does here is he guards the pawn, and now white's threatening to take the knight and then take the pawn. If black blunders and castles, white plays bishop takes, pawn takes, knight takes. Black can't play knight takes because of rook takes. And if he plays queen d4, then knight f3 hits the queen and stays up a pawn. If black plays, says, I'm going to counterattack then white simply has a counting tactic here. A counting tactic is a forced series of trades that ends up winning material. So here white says, oh, I have a counting tactic. I take queen, you take my queen. 
I take your bishop, and if you take my pawn, I ended up winning a bishop for a pawn. In fact, now I could even play rook e1 and get a skewer, maybe win some more. So bishop g4 is a tactical blunder falling for a counting sequence. What does all that mean? It means that black can't castle here. Castling does not allow the e-pawn to be safe. So therefore, he needs to stop bishop takes c6. But since he's played a6, he now has the opportunity to play b5. That's the main move. Bishop to b3. Now if black wants, he can castles. That's become the most popular move. White plays c3, getting ready to play d4 and being able to capture back with a pawn to keep two pawns in the middle. Black plays d6, hoping to pin that knight if the pawn goes to d4. This is one of those times where it's worthwhile to play a move like h3. And then on the next move, no matter what black plays, except for maybe knight a5, white can play d4. If he plays knight a5 first, you save the bishop, you don't give him the bishop pair, then you play here. And now black can play something like queen c7, saving the e-pawn with an equal game. Okay, we have time for maybe one more opening of safety. Uh, let's see, what should we look at? Let's look at a uh, Tarish French. All right, e4, e6, d4, d5. Okay, the e4 pawn is not safe. What are all the ways to make it safe? Well, we can just trade it off, play the exchange ration. That makes it safe. We can push it and make it the, um, the advanced variation. That's not the most popular at the Grandmaster level, but if you study it well, it's certainly popular. I don't recommend this for beginners because it's very easy if black knows this opening and white doesn't for black to get some good play. The most popular move here is knight c3, just guarding the pawn. And the move that I like to play is knight to d2, the Tarish variation, which also guards the pawn at the cost of blocking the bishop, but now he can't play things like the winnower variation because you get that AWL move c3 in. So bishop b4 is not a move here. So the main move for black is to either play c5 and counterattack the center or knight f6. Let's take a look at knight f6. Knight f6, now the e-pawn is not safe again. It's attacked twice and it's only guarded once. The main way to make it safe is to do the AWL e5. This is a little better than when you play it without the knight there because now he has to move the knight two times. And that gives white a little bit more of a theoretical advantage. Black saves the knight. Again, no counterattack would be quite good. White usually develops the bishop here to his nice square. Black plays his break moves. If you haven't seen my video on break moves, if you don't know what a break move is, that would be another great video to watch. You can see all these videos go together. The five ways to make a piece safe, the safety table, the Roy Lopez, break moves. You know, all these things go together. These are the basic ideas and strategies of tactics and, and safety. Okay, so white would play c3 here. Black plays knight c6. And now white makes a clever move. Black's attacking this pawn twice. So you'd think he'd want to play knight f3 and guard it. The problem with knight f3 is black can play queen b6 and hit the pawn a third time. <clears throat> and now white has no way to save it that's really good. If he plays knight b3, black can play c4, forking the bishop in the knight. If he takes the pawn, it helps black develop, attacking this pawn. And now if white castles to guard his f pawn, black can win the e pawn. So... Knight f3 is a move, it's a complicated move, but the main move is to play the sneaky knight e2. Why knight e2? Because now if black plays queen b6, which is not the main move, the main move is pawn takes pawn, white can now move the other knight to f3, and now he has a pawn, a knight, and a knight guarding the pawn, and black has three also. Why is white going through all those mach machinations? Well, the reason is, is the other way is to save the pawn. Move it is not possible. And guarding it is not really possible. So he has to take, and taking is usually good, but here he's destroying his guard on his e5 pawn, and he's helping black develop the bishop, and he's giving black a threat to f2. So he really doesn't want to do all that. It's really quite bad for white to do it in this particular position. So therefore he's stuck guarding it. And that's why he puts the knight on e2, so that if black does play this move, he can guard it the requisite number of times to make it safe. Notice that ties up white's pieces, 
But black has no real good way to increase the pressure further here. So white's, so black has no way to increase the pressure. So white's doing pr pretty well in this position. And this is a main line for both players. In fact, queen b6, after knight e2, the main line is something, today is something like c takes d, c takes d, and now the break move f6 in the front. And then white usually takes, black takes, white castles, with a slight advantage to white. This is, again, a main book line. All right, so let's review what we've learned today. We learned that when a piece isn't safe, there's five ways to make it safe. You can just move it to a safe square. You can capture the attacking piece. You can block the attack if it's from a bishop, rook, or queen from a distance. You can capture, uh, you can block, capture, move, oh, defend, of course. And the fifth one is counterattack. What can we say about each one? Let's do each one really quickly. Counterattack, complicated, dangerous, sometimes it's wonderful, often a disaster. Defend, ties down your pieces, usually fairly passive. Not always the best way. Sometimes it's the one you have to do. Capture the attacking piece. You can rarely do that, but when you can, if you can do it safely, that's very often could be the best one. Move the piece. Very, very often the best one. If your opponent does an AWL, attacks your piece with something worth less, probably just moving it. And lastly, blocking it. We saw earlier blocking it could be bad. It could create a pin. It could be great. It could create a counterattack uh, and everything in between. So blocking sometimes is obvious. For instance, only three of the things could be done for a check. Let's say we play e4, he plays d6. We play d4, he plays, let's say, e6, and I play bishop to, to b5 check. Three of the five ways can be used to get out of check. Blocking, capturing the attacking piece, and moving the king. You always have to do one of the three. We're here, capturing is not possible. If we change the position and we let white play an extra move and black play here and now we check, now black has all three ways available to him. He can capture the bishop, he can move the king. You might say, well, that's silly. Why would I do that if I can capture the bishop? And you'd be right. I'm just trying to give you all the ways. Or he can block it. He can block it with the bishop. He can block it with a knight. He can block it with a knight here. Certainly doesn't want to block it with a queen, but it is legal. He can get out of check. Or he could even play the AWL C6. If we go back a move and don't put the pawn on A6 and just play bishop B5 check here, my bet is that Stockfish is going to say the best one is to play C6, although trading off your bad bishop that's blocked by this pawn for the good bishop is also a good idea. So those are going to be the top two. Let's, let's, let's ask Stockfish. We'll move up and get the analysis here. Okay, top two moves. Stockfish says, knight d7 followed by something attacking the bishop is also good. So he disagrees with me. He doesn't want to trade bishops here. He says black should play either the awl c6 or he should play knight d7. Notice he thinks white's better no matter what black does because black's played these silly moves e6 and d6 and let white have such a good center. So even though white has just played a a not very good move, he still has the advantage. Okay, so there's three ways to get out of check. Capture, block, or move the king. You can't counterattack a check, and you can't, um, <clears throat> you can't defend a king. So there's only three of the five ways to get out of check, but there's five ways to make any other piece safe. All right, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, Hit that like button, tell your friends about it, subscribe to the channel, and we'll keep giving you some really good things to, to look at. I hope this video was very helpful for a lot of our members out there watching. See you next time. Bye.